Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Ah, ça, ça marche. Ok, good afternoon, and welcome to this enchanting French song concert. Ah, je vais éteindre le microphone. I'm going to cut my phone off because <coughs> that would be embarrassing. If it's me, anyone else is fine at this point, until the concert starts, then we all should cut them off. All right, uh, welcome to this enchanting French song concert. My name is Blair Bumagura, and I am the president of the Alliance Française Hawaii, a nonprofit cultural organization dedicated to the cultivation of the French language and culture here on, in the state of Hawaii. <clears throat> it's uh, an absolute pleasure to be able to welcome you here today as we embark on this musical journey of French melody, its timeless beauty, otherwise known as French art song. We're going to pay homage to a significant era in European history known as uh, the French Salon during La Belle Époque, which occurred roughly at the end of the 19th century and the early 20th century. Before I proceed uh, with my remarks, um, I'd like to uh, invite up here a friend uh, from Hawaii Opera Theater, Jamie, who is going to discuss um, <coughs> what's going on at HOT this season. And I see Jamie coming down now. Our friends at HLT. Hello, everyone. I don't think I'll need a mic because um, I used to be an opera singer, but now I am the artistic director for Hawaii Opera Theater. So, welcome, everybody. I'm going to be very brief with my comments, but first, I'm going to tell you something that maybe you all don't know. Hawaii Opera has been bringing opera and theater to the island for over 60 years now. So, uh, first up, I'd like to tell you about two productions that are coming up in our Studio 101 uh, productions. And that actually is, if you've never been to a Studio 101 production, it's really great. Um, in the sense that it's like a supper club without supper. <laughs> but always with cocktails. It's an intimate environment. We have a little bit of table action going on with a little bit of lamps on there. The singers are right up close and personal. We always feature the human voice. So our very first project coming up is called Hot Blue Hawaii. So I just uh, want to go through this. It's, it's, it's mixed two part hapa hale mele, one part opera with a little dash of Elvis and a little splash of hula. Shake it up and serve it up. And that's on November 17th and November 19th. So come and enjoy our nostalgic mix uh, with an evening down memory lane. And then next up, we have a program called I'll Be Seeing You. That's December 8th and December 10th. And uh, this I invite you to come step back into time into the 1940s. Uh, this is a hot holiday radio show uh, set in Honolulu on Christmas Eve 1940. So it's featuring the greatest hits of the 1940s crooners, vocal pop divas that ruled the airwaves. And then to our main stage shows, and these are just a few highlights. Um, I'm really excited about this one. It's called Pagliacci. Many of you have known this or have seen this before. This is going to be a non-traditional take, and it kind of has to be because it's going to be in the round at the Blaisdell Arena, because the Blaisdell Concert Hall is closed. So we've had to punt and think creatively out of the box. So imagine love that is not return of fatal consequences of lust, power, betrayal, and rejection. And this production is sure to break the mold. It's February 16th and 18th. And then to round out the season, we have the ever popular, fantastic La Boheme, and that's at the Waikiki Shell. So what better way to sit there watching a traditional classical opera, your life at the, the Waikiki shell, you've got Diamond Head on one side, the ocean on the other, you listen to this beautiful music uh, with HSO and our opera singers, um, two performances, April 26th and 28th. And those are just a few of our productions. So I welcome you to visit us at hawaiiopera.com for ticket information, or show locations, um, all of that information. So, enjoy the concert today. Thank you for having me.
Thank you, Jamie. Thank you. Now, as many of you know by simply reading the program, this afternoon was made possible in part with funding from the Fédération des Alliances Françaises. It's the national organization that oversees the chapters of the various Alliances Françaises throughout the United States. Uh, this project was also made possible in part from funds received in the form of a generous co-sponsorship from TV5 Monde that might be familiar to many of you as a French television platform. Um, and so as you, uh, as was hinted or explained in, in earlier emails, you're going to receive, as it has just been today, a link for six months of free uh, French television. Um, and we'll send that out uh, this next week. But the wonderful thing about that is if you're into French films, TV, documentaries, movies, um, that will be available to you for six months for free. And then maybe if you like it, you can keep it going. So we really thank our friends um, at the Basic Bon Plus as well as the Federation. <clears throat> um, and obviously, we cannot do a program like this in such a beautiful setting without our friends from the University of Hawaii, um, which I'm very fortunate to be able to teach um, as an adjunct here. Um, I'm so grateful to the chair, our wonderful new chair, uh, Professor Don Womack, as well as our uh, prior chair, um, Professor Larry Paxton, who I see in, uh, back there. Um, he helped to set things in motion, so we thank them. Uh, we uh, thank our associate chair. We could not have done this without Dr. Maya Seifert, um, as well as Dr. John Korf, uh, the area head of the piano department. Um, it really takes a musical village, and so uh, we thank you. Um, and we thank all of the team here at UH uh, School of Music uh, at Manoa that, that helps to get this going, even if it's the theater with William, um, we, as well as our, uh, you know, the production team behind there. So thank you all. Um, and then lastly, I just have to thank the Alliance Française board um, and the members uh, who are so devoted to keep this going. Um, it, it's not easy on the back end, and we have uh, a team uh, that is just ty works tirelessly. Um, I will name a few names, but it, there's many, many more behind this. Um, but I just have to acknowledge Teresa Mamon um, and Stacy Thomas, uh, Dennis Sally, who works on the website, um, and Christy, who's uh, Bridges, who's helping to check you in, as just a few, as well as a wonderful regent, um, Pat Lee, who helped uh, with a lovely donation to the Cultural Fund um, in recent, uh, this past year that helped this project today. Um, and lifetime members like Lynn Johnson with her generosity um, in terms of uh, what will be unveiled later on today for those of you who join us at the reception. So I just would like us to give a round of applause for the team and the friends. Of the now, as we gather in this beautiful setting, it's essential to recognize the cultural significance of the French Salon. The Salon was not merely a gathering place of artistic minds, but it was the epicenter of intellectual and creative exchange, a place where ideas flourished and art thrived. These Salons provided a nurturing environment for poets, musicians, artists, of, a whole range of artists um, to, to share their creativity. Um, and this rich cultural tradition laid the foundation for many artistic movements that were to come and innovations uh, that continue to resonate uh, in, our, in the art world and the cultural world today. This afternoon, our performers, will uh, our performers will take us back to an era which is truly exquisite, uh, both poetically and musically. Um, so I just, uh, these interpretations, I think, will hopefully wash over you uh, with a sense of sentiment um, of the past, but also they hold a strange sense of contemporariness uh, to them as well. Um, now, before I sit down and let our artists take the stage, I just want to say a few words about them. I first met Leticia Grimaldi in 2009 when she was a young student at the Juilliard School of Music in New York, pursuing her master's degree, and I was immediately struck by her intelligence and determination. And an immediate kinship was struck between us simply because of our passion and love for the repertoire you're going to be hearing today. Moreover, I was astounded by the fact that she spoke with relative <laughs> ease and fluency six languages um, due to her unusual uh, and unique background, which placed her all over the world, world growing up, as well as she continues to maintain that today as a singing artist. Leticia's mentors include some of the most famous and influential musicians, including Matthias Birner, 
uh, who actually did a recital in here in East Square Hall a few years ago. Uh, the legendary pianist Dalton Baldwin, um, who often had arts on festivals here in Hawaii as well. Uh, Thomas Grubbs, Victor Berganza, Lorraine Newbar, Thomas Quasthoff, Francois Lou, Sir Thomas Allen, and Sir Alfred Gregor. All mentors. Can't imagine. <laughs> Uh, her growing success in this competitive field doesn't surprise me in the least given the extensive guidance and mentorship that she's received from the very best, combined with her natural talents and instincts. As for her collaborative partner, Amiel Bouchakovitz, it would be difficult for me to imagine someone better suited to partner with Leticia, as Amiel is also a polyglot and has a very astonishing international background. He possesses three passports for different countries. So I imagine traveling with Amiel was a bit of a guessing game as to which passport he's going to be traveling with that day. Like Leticia, he counts Sir Alfred Grendel as his mentor, along with the great pianist Philip Moll, and he's worked closely with luminaries in our field like Dietrich Fischer-Biska, Teresa Berganza, Thomas Hansen, Dame Felicity Lott, Barbara Bonney, Nadine Sierra, and Brigitte Fassbender. I'll simply refer you to their bios and programs for a list of some of their notable performances and awards that they've been given at competitions. But suffice it to say, we requested the short form of their bio for this program due to limited space. Do consider seeking out the CD, Home Club. I had it out there as well for you. Uh, it is a wonderful collection of French songs by uh, female composers who long lived in the shadows, or the Oma, the shadows of their male counterparts. It's a wonderful CD. I highly recommend you can find it on Amazon, Spotify, Apple Music, or wherever you can get your music. I encourage you to engage in this music and discuss it. Be inspired and let these melodies wash over you. Thank you for being a part of this journey, and I just want to encourage you to check out what other cultural events we have going on at the Alliance Française on our website. And you can Google Aria Process Y or remember A at Hawaii.org. There you can find out how to donate, how to join, how to take part in cultural initiatives, or simply take some French language classes. Like speak another language, live another soul. So, without further ado, let us immerse ourselves in the magic of the French language as presented by Leticia Grimaldi and Amir Bouchard.
Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is a wonderful delight for Amiel and I to be here sharing this afternoon with you in this beautiful hall, in this new island that we have just discovered. Um, we are really delighted to present to you this uh, Salon chez Pauline Viardot. Um, a quick word on Pauline Viardot. Blair already mentioned a lot, but Pauline Viardot was a uh, composer, an opera singer, a piano teacher, pianist, and a voice teacher. She had the whole package of a musician, um, but most importantly, she spoke many languages and hold this, held, sorry, this uh, salon in Paris during the Belle Epoque in this wonderful time of novelties and uh, new, uh, new uh, inventions. Um, she invited many artists to this uh, salon, uh, friends of hers uh, that she had met during her travels, uh, one of which is um, uh, sorry, Clara Schumann. And so we decided to create a little salon, Persian salon, where we present all her friends uh, from Germany to Spain to France and even to Caracas with Rina Loan. Um, they would all gather in uh, and present their works, um, artists, uh, composers, sculptors, writers, poets, everyone would meet and expose their music. She was also, uh, she would also invite a lot of her fellow uh, women composers, which is very essential because it's the only place where they could expose and showcase their um, artistry. So I, this was an invitation uh, with the Duparc Invitation au Voyage. I'm inviting you to a little trip back to the Belle Epoque, to Paris. I want you to imagine a little salon um, with the uh, Eiffel Tower being constructed from the window and uh, having all these artists showing their uh, works. This next piece is by Cécile Chaminade, Villanelle. <coughs> Oh, 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 oh,
Ich weiß nicht, was soll es bedeuten, dass ich so traurig bin. Yeah. 
language that doesn't exist anymore, or very few people still speak it. It's a dialect, Lovernia. Um, and uh, I mean, I find it very special. And I, I, Pauline Gardot had her, her Pantalou de Lou, her uh, salon, but it's a very special one that I, I chose for you. So I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Thank you. 